Uh, tonight's topic is about non-surgical treatment of endometriosis. And I'm sideways. Are we good that way? You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is about non-surgical. I mean, it's kind of surgical, but non-surgical treatment of endometriomas and what they are starting to do. And I've been doing for a while with different techniques is to do something called sclerotherapy. So many of you have probably heard of sclerotherapy in regards to veins. You can scar varicose veins by injecting them with chemicals and things to get them to close off for people that have horrible, painful varicose veins or, or you know, unsightly varicose veins. And it's excellent treatment because it scars them down and they can't open up anymore. And so now you've treated the vein. Well, someone had the cool idea that maybe we should try these for endometrial. Now, I never really took off because there are some risks. However, there's never been a really good meta-analysis of this until now. And a, a Korean group put together a meta-analysis of all the studies looking at sclerotherapy for endometriomas. And this, based on the data, looks like something we all need to think about. So I'm going to explain what sclerotherapy is to you first. I'm just going to jump out of here and go to notes. And I will show you how to see all of that. Whoops. Okay. I don't know how to get the thing off the screen there. Let's close the notes. Hang on one second. View as gallery and go back. So far, they just see you. So don't worry. They can't tell oh, okay. what you're doing. You're just playing on your iPad. All right. I'm just, just playing on concerned. my iPad. So yeah. uh, no pressure. You can show them the uh, Okay. Now that you're ready for that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do some sketching here. Forgive me. I'm not an artist. So if this is the ovary over here. Nice ovary. Yeah. Nice ovary, right? So what you do is you take your needle and you stick your needle into the ovary. So this is like an IVF egg retrieval. But what we do from there is we take ethanol, which is alcohol, and first you suck out all of the endometrioma fluid, which is usually brown, but I'll use green for this. So that stuff's all going out. You're sucking out all the fluid through the needle. Wait, are you doing something? something? You do something I with the green? Something. Yeah. It did it not show up? It did not show up. Okay, let's try it. Oh, it's so faint. Yeah. 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 How's that? Yeah. Okay. Now I get it. There you go. So Kinda we're sucking out here, all the fluid first. And then we're going to take alcohol and we're going to put alcohol all back inside the cyst like that, flushing it in through the needle. So you need a double lumen needle and you sclero you scar shut that cyst. It'll kill the cyst. Alcohol, class one carcinogen, very cellular toxic. You fill an endometrioma cyst wall with it. It's going to kill the endometrioma. And so the idea behind this is get rid of the cyst without actually having to remove the cyst. Very cool idea, very novel technique. So the question is, how well does this work? And so these guys actually did a meta-analysis. They took all the studies that are out there, they pulled them all together, and they looked at the results. Talk about that. Let me scroll ahead to where the meaty stuff is so I can just share it with you directly. So here is the first part of this study, okay? They looked at 1,365 different studies. They automatically removed almost 1,200 of them because they were duplicates, which seems a bit odd to me, but that's what they're reporting. So I'm assuming they did it right. They then screened 174 articles that were remaining, and they had to remove another 133 because they didn't actually follow the appropriate treatment or it didn't have the right outcomes, or it had treatments other than alcohol, ethanol in the, in the actual protocol. And so they ended up with 41 that they kept. And from that 41, they said 35 were assessed for eligibility. We somehow sort of lost a few in there. I couldn't figure out how they lost those extra ones. And then they said eight more didn't have the right agents. So they ended up in the final number with 27 articles. 27 articles is a lot. And from that 27 articles, they actually had quite a substantial overall number of patients in the study. Um, I think if I remember correctly, it was close to 1,800 patients that were in this study altogether as part of their meta-analysis. So I'm going to expand this so you guys can see it. Hopefully that will show up well. So in the first figure, figure two, it's the delta change in AMH. So what this is showing you, how much of a change, positive or negative, you're going to see in the AMH. And if you can look where the diamond is there, the diamond is on the plus side, which means it favored the sclerotherapy. How much? By 67%, you are going to get a lower reduction in your AMH by sclerotherapy than you were by doing a cystectomy. So all of these were comparing 
cystectomies where they actually removed the cyst to sclerotherapy where they actually just injected the alcohol to kill the cyst. And so this is a huge difference. And looking at all of those little green dots in there, every single study they included in that analysis, except for one, actually favored the sclerotherapy. And the one study that didn't favor the sclerotherapy, they followed out for a really long time. It was like three years. Most of our IVF patients are not waiting three years to, to do stuff. So very interesting that you can get a much lower reduction in your AMH by following the sclerotherapy rather than following the cystectomy. What about number of embryos? So that's the next one. You can see that there. Same idea again. There's the diamond. The diamond is statistically significantly the sclerotherapy. Some of these studies kind of cross the confidence interval, but overall the result favors the sclerotherapy and it's a 32% difference. So that again is a, a huge number, very substantial and showing that you are going to get more embryos if you do the sclerotherapy than you will if you do the cystectomy. What about the number of eggs? Same idea, a 24% increase favors the sclerotherapy over the cystectomy. What about the number of mature eggs? We all know patients with IVF have fewer embryos. They have fewer mature eggs. They have fewer eggs in general. So all these are really important factors that they examine. A 38% increase in the number of mature eggs you're getting from sclerotherapy. So very, very interesting data to look at because Again, you're seeing here the number of mature eggs you're getting is way better with the sclerotherapy than it is with the cystectomy. They go on further to look at the important stuff. What about clinical pregnancies? What about fertilization rates? So clinical pregnancies were a 64%. So that's the number of pregnancies you see with a heartbeat after you've had sclerotherapy compared to cystectomy. I am an expert minimally invasive surgeon. I love being in the operating room. I love doing these surgeries, no matter how tough they are. We peel the ovaries apart. We take them off the bowel, you know, the back of the uterus, the sidewalls, all that stuff. And I always peel out the cysts. But this is actually telling me with a very simple, potentially in-office procedure, we can do as good and better job at protecting the ovaries, get patients much faster access to their treatment, and just use something simple like alcohol inside there to kill off this. So we're certainly not ready for this yet. This is going to take all sorts of approval and assessments, and we ought to apply for approval from the College of Physicians and Surgeons. But this is very interesting information and maybe something we need to look at in the future. So clinical pregnancy rate, way, way better. What about fertilization? Interestingly, no difference in the fertilization rate. So the number of eggs that actually become embryos, not any different. It wasn't favoring one or the other, and is not make a difference in the amount of drugs you need to use for your IVF cycle. So this was very, very interesting. The important thing with this, which is not shown in these figures, but they talk about in the article, is that we know that when you drain an endometrioma, even if you accidentally poke one at the time of, of uh, egg retrieval, your chances of having an infection or abscess formation is sky high. And it is very risky, and that's why I don't like doing egg retrievals on patients with endometriomas, because I've actually overseen legal cases for other clinics where there was an injury from an endometrioma and it turned into an abscess. Once upon a time, I actually saved one of my colleagues from a lawsuit because the abscesses can occur spontaneously as well. And so you need to be very cautious with this because there is probably an increased risk of infection when we poke these endometriomas with a needle drain them, and then refill them with alcohol. Now, you would assume that the alcohol, which is a sterilizing agent, would kill any bacteria in there, but this stuff is complicated. If you don't get rid of all of the endometriosis fluid and you just start filling with alcohol, it may be a situation where we run into problems. The other issue is some endometriomas are very difficult to drain because the fluid in there is so thick, it doesn't come out through our little needles or even our big needles. So the technical component of this may be complicated, and I will be reaching out to some of the authors of those individual studies to see exactly how they performed it. But I am hoping that probably sometime in the next, next six months or so, this is something we can look at doing, because if it'll reduce the amount of patients we have to take for surgery, and it will afford us the ability to get them into treatment without significant impact on their ovaries, and potentially increase the success rates of the things like fertilization or 
the chances of clinical pregnancy or more mature eggs or more embryos, these are all really good things for us to be looking at. So not ready yet. Please don't call the office and ask when we can do this. We're not going to be doing it yet. We don't have permission to even try something like this yet. And we do need permission. But it is very, very cool. And it'll also be great for people in other countries like the UK, which I am headed to soon for our new clinic out there, because of the fact that those patients have to wait forever, just like we do in Canada. And we may be able to do this as an in-office procedure if we can get permission for it there as well. So super exciting news, very, very powerful stuff, big game changer. These kinds of articles we love out here on Fertility Fact Fiction. And so this is something that's up and coming, and you may be able to get treatment for your endometriosis without needing to go under the knife, which is really, really a huge paradigm shift in the way we think and in the way we do things. So very, very cool, especially for me, because you guys all know I love endometriosis and love helping our patients with endo. This might be a paradigm shift, a game changer for all of us.